Chapter 13 Seeing Green At the start of the 21st century everyone agreed that the next big thing was clean technology it had to be in beijing the smog had gotten so bad that people could not see from building to building even breathing was a health risk bangladesh with its arsenic laden water wells was suffering what the new york times called the biggest mass poisoning in history in the us hurricanes ivan and katrina were said to be harbingers of the coming devastation from global warming. Al Gore implored us to attack these problems with the urgency and resolve that has previously seen only previously been seen only when nations mobilized for war. People got busy. Entrepreneurs started thousands of clean tech companies. An investor poured more than fifty billion dollars into them. So began the quest to cleanse the world. It did not work. Instead of a healthier planet, we got a massive clean tech bubble. Soliandra is the most famous famous green ghost, but most clean tech companies met similarly disastrous ends. More than 40 solar manufacturers went out of business or filed for bankruptcy in 2012 alone. The leading index of alternative energy companies shows the bubble's dramatic deflation. Uh, there is a picture, Renix, Renewable Energy Industrial Index, 2003, it started uh, from uh, almost uh, 402, then it reached to its high of uh, two, 2000 in 2008, and then it reached to its low in of around 200 in 2012. Picture complete. Now coming back, why did clean tech fail? Conservators think they already know the answer as soon as green energy became a priority for the government it was poisoned but there really were and there still are good reasons for making energy a priority and the truth about clean tech is more complex and more important than government failure most clean tech companies crashed because they neglected one or more of the seven questions that every business must answer number one the engineering question can you create breakthrough breakthrough technology instead of Incremental improvements. Number two, the timing question. Is now the right time to start your particular business? Number three, the monopoly question. Are you staring with a big share of a small market? Number four, the people question. Do you have the right team? Number five, the distribution question. Do you have a way to not just create but deliver your product? Number six, the durability question. Will your market position be defensible 10 and 20 years into the future? Number seven, the secret question. Have you identified a unique opportunity that others don't see? We have discussed these elements before. Whatever your industry, any great business plan must address every one of them. If you don't have good answer to these questions, good answers to these questions, you will run into lots of bad luck and your business will fail. If you nail all seven, you will master fortune and succeed. Even getting five or six correct might work. But the striking thing about the clean tech bubble was that people were staring starting companies with zero good answers and that meant hoping for a miracle. It's hard to know exactly why any particular clean tech company failed since almost all of them made several serious mistakes. But since any one of those mistakes is enough to doom your company, it's worth reviewing clean tech's losing scorecard in more detail. The engineering question. A great technology company should have proprietary technology and order of magnitude better than its nearest substitute. But clean tech companies rarely produce 2x let alone 10x improvements. Sometimes their offering were acu actually worse than the product they sought to replace. Soliandra developed novel cylindrical solar cells but to a first approximation, cylindrical cells are only 1 by pi as uh, efficient as flat ones. They simply don't receive as much direct sunlight. The company tried to correct for this deficiency by using mirrors to reflect more sunlight to hit the bottoms of the panels but it's hard to recover from a radically inferior starting point. Companies must strive for 10x better because merely incremental improvements often end up meaning no improvement at all for the end user. Suppose you develop a new wind turbine that's 20% more efficient than any existing technology. When you test it in the laboratory, the su that sounds good at first, but the lab result won't begin to compensate for the expenses and risk faced by any new product in the real world. And even if your system really is 20% better on net for the customer who buys it, People are so used to exaggerated claims that you will be met with skepticism when you try to sell it. Only when your product is 10x better than can you offer the customer transparent superiority. The timing question. Clean tech entrepreneurs worked hard to convince themselves that their appointed hour had arrived. 
when he announced his new company in 2008 spectra what ceo andrew wilson stated that the solar industry is akin to where the microprocessor industry was in the late 1970s there is a lot to be figured out and improved the second part was right but the microprocessor analogy was way off ever since the first microprocessor was built in 1970 computing advanced not just rapidly but exponentially look at intel's early product release history generation 4 bit processor model 4004 year 1971 8 bit 8008 1972 16 bit 8086 uh, 1970 32 bit apex 432 1981 The first silicon cellar cell by contrast was created by Bell Labs in 1954 more than a half century before Wilson's press release photovoltaic efficiency improved in the intervening decades but slowly and linearly Bell's uh, Bell's first solar cell had about 6% effi- efficiency neither today's crystalline silicon cells nor modern thin film cells have exceeded 25% efficiency in the field There were few engineering developments in the mid 2000s to suggest imp- impending lift off entering a slow moving market can be a good strategy but only if you have a dev- definite and realistic plan to take it over the failed clean tech companies had none the monopoly question in 2006 billionaire technology investor john dyer dyer announced that a green is the new red white and blue he could have stopped at red as dyer himself said internet Uh, size markets are in the billions of dollars the energy markets are in the trillions what he didn't say in that is that huge trillion dollar markets means ruthless bloody competition others he could do over and over in the 2000 i listened to dozens of clean tech entrepreneurs begin fantastically rosy powerpoint presentation with all two to two true tales of trillion dollar market as if that were a good thing Clean tech executives emphasize the bounty of an energy market big enough for all comers, but each one typically believed that his own company had an edge. In 2006, Dave Pierce, CEO of solar manufacturer Mia Sol, admitted to a congressional panel that his company was just one of several very strong startups working on one particular kind of thin film solar cell development. Minutes later. Pierce uh, predicted that Mia Sols would become the largest producer of thin film solar cells in the world within a year's time. That didn't happen, but it might not have helped them anyway. Thin film is just one of more than a dozen kinds of solar cells. Customers won't care about any particular technology unless it solves a particular problem in a superior way. And if you can't monopolize a unique solution for a small market, you will be stuck with vicious competition. That's what happened to Mia Sol, which was acquired in 2013 for hundreds of millions of dollars less than its investor had put into the uh, company. Exaggerating your own uniqueness is an easy way to botch the monopoly question. Suppose you are running a solar company that successfully installed hundreds of solar panel systems with a combined power generation capacity of 100 megawatts. Since total U.S. Uh, solar energy uh, production capacity is 950 megawatts you own 10.53% of the market congratulations you tell yourself you are a player your company 100 megawatt us solar energy production 950 megawatt but what if the us solar energy market is in the relevant market what if the relevant market is the global solar market with a production capacity of 18 gigawatts your 100 megawatts now takes you uh, a very small fish in makes you a very small fish indeed Suddenly, you own less than one percent of the market. Your company, point one gigawatt U.S. solar energy production, point nine five gigawatt global solar energy production, eighteen gigawatt. And what if the uh, appropriate measure isn't global solar, but rather renewable energy in general? Annual production production capacity from renewables is four twenty gigabyte gigawatts globally. You just shrank to zero point zero two percent of the market. And compared to the total global power generation capacity of fifteen thousand. Uh, gigawatts your 100 megawatts is just a drop in the ocean global clean tech power generation 420 uh, gigawatts uh, global power generation 15000 gigawatts clean tech entrepreneurs thinking about markets was hopelessly confused they would rhetorically uh, shrink their market in order to seem differentiated only to turn around and ask to be valued uh, based on huge supposedly lucrative markets but you can't dominate a sub market if it's fictional and huge markets are highly competitive not highly attainable most clean tech founders would have been better off opening a new british restaurant in downtown palo alto 
the people question energy problems are engineering problems so you would expect to find nerds running clean tech companies you would be wrong the ones that failed were run by shockingly non technical teams these salesmen executives were good at raising capital and securing government subsidies but they were less good at building product that customers wanted to buy at founders fund we saw this coming the most obvious clue was the sartorial clean tech executives were running around wearing suits and ties this was a huge red flag because real technologists wear t-shirts and jeans so we instituted a blanket rule pass on any company uh, whose founders dressed up for pitch meetings maybe we still would have avoided these bad investment if we had taken the time to evaluate each company's technology in detail but the team inside never invest in a tech ceo that wears a suit got us to the truth a lot fast, faster the best sales is hidden there is nothing wrong with a ceo who can sell but if he actually looks like a salesman he is probably bad at sales and worse at tech solindra ceo brian harrison tesla motor ceo elon musk the distribution question clean tech companies effectively uh, quoted governments and in investor but they often forgot about customers they learned the hard way that the world is not a laboratory selling and delivering a product is at least as important as the product itself just ask israeli electric vehicle startup better place which from 2007 to 2012 raised and spent more than 800 million dollar to build swappable battery packs and charging stations for electric cars the company sought to create a green alternative that would lessen our dependence on highly polluting transportation technology so and it just it did just that at least by 1000 cars the number it sold before filing for filing for bankruptcy even selling that many was an achievement because each of those cars was very uh, hard for hard for customers to buy for starter it was never clear with what you were actually buying better place bought uh, sedans from renault and refitted them with electric batteries and electric motors so were you buying an electric renault or were you buying a better place in any case if you decided to buy one you had to jump through a series of hoops first you needed to seek approval from better place to get that you had to prove that you uh, live close uh, enough to a better place battery swapping station and promise to follow predictable routes if you passed that test you had to sign up for a fueling subscription in order to recharge your car only then could you get started uh, learning the new behavior of stopping to swap out battery packs on the road better place thought its technology spoke for itself so they didn't bother to market it clearly reflecting on the company's failure one frustrated customer asked what wasn't the uh, Why wasn't there a billboard in Tel Aviv showing a picture of a Toyota Prius for one sixty thousand shekels and a picture of this car for one sixty thousand plus fuel for your e- four years? He still uh, bought one of the cars, but unlike most people, he was a hobbyist who would do anything to keep driving it. Unfortunately, he can't, as the Better Place board of directors stated upon selling the company's assets for a meager twelve million dollar in two thousand thirteen. The technical challenges we overcome came successfully but the other obstacles we were not able to overcome the durability question every entrepreneur should plan to be the last mover in her particular market that starts with asking yourself what will the world look like 10 and 20 years from now and how will my business fit in few clean tech companies had a good answer as a result all their obituaries resemble each other a few months before before it filed for bankruptcy in 2011 Engine Evergreen Solar explained its decision to close one of its US factories. Solar manufacturers in China have received uh, considerable government and financial support although our production costs are now below originally planned levels and uh, lower than most western manufacturers they're still much higher than those of our low cost competitors in China. But it wasn't until 2012 that the blame China chorus really exploded discussing its bankruptcy filing us department of energy backed abound solar blamed aggressive pricing actions from chinese solar panel companies that made it very difficult for an early age startup early stage startup company to scale in current market condition when solar panel maker energy conversion devices failed in february 2012 it went beyond blaming china in a press release and filed a 950 million dollar lawsuit against the prominent against three prominent chinese solar manufacturers the same companies that solyendra's trustees in bankruptcy sued later that year on the grounds of attempted monopolization conspiracy and predatory pricing but was competition from chinese manufacturers really impossible to predict clean tech entrepreneurs would have 
डन वेल टू रीफ्रेज द ड्यूरेबिलिटी क्वेश्चन एंड आस वट विल स्टॉप चाइना फ्रॉम वाइपिंग आउट माई बिजनेस विदाउट एन आंसर द रिजल्ट वुड नॉट हैव कम एज ए सरप्राइज Beyond the failure to anticipate competitions in manufacturing the same green products, clean tech embraces misguided assumptions about the energy market as a whole. An industry premised on the supposed twilight of fossil fuels was blindsided by the rise of fracking. In 2000, just 1.7 percent of America's natural gas came from fracked shale. Five years later, the figure had climbed to 4.1 percent. Nevertheless, nobody in clean tech took this trend seriously. Renewables were the only way forward. Fossil fuels could not possibly get cheaper or cleaner in the future, but they did. By 2013, shale gas accounted for 34 percent of America's natural gas, and gas prices had fallen more than 70 percent since 2008. Devastating most renewable energy business models. Fracking may not be a durable energy solution either. but it was enough to doom clean tech companies that did not see it coming the secret question every clean tech company justified itself with conventional truths about the need for a cleaner world they deluded themselves into believing that an overwhelming social need for alternative energy solution implied an overwhelming business opportunity for clean tech companies of all kinds consider how conventional it had become by 2006 to be bullish on solar that year president george w bush uh, heralded a future of solar roof that will enable the american family to be able to generate their own electricity investor and clean tech executive bill gross declared that the potential for solar is enormous suvi sharma the then then ceo of solar manufacturer solaria uh, admitted that while there is a gold rush feeling to solar there is also real gold uh, here or in our case sunshine but rushing to embrace the convention sent score so of solar panel companies q cells evergreen solar spectra watt and even gross on energy innovation to name just a few from promising beginnings to bankruptcy count caught very quickly each of the casualties had uh, described their bright future using broad conventions on which everybody agreed great companies have secret specific reasons for success that other people uh, don't see the myth of social entrepreneurs ship clean tech entrepreneurs aimed for more than just success as most business define it the clean tech bubble was the biggest phenomenon and the biggest flop in the history of social entrepreneurship this philanthropic approach to business starts with the idea that corporation and non profits have until now been polar opposites corporation have great power but they are shackled to the profit motive non profits pursue the public interest but they are weak players in the wider economy social entrepreneurs aim to combine the best of both worlds and do well by doing good usually they end up doing neither the ambiguity between social and financial goals doesn't help but the ambiguity in the world social is even more of a problem if sometimes something is socially good is it good for society or merely seen as good by society whatever is good enough to receive applause from all audiences can only be convention like the general idea of green energy progress isn't held back by some difference between corporate greed and non profit goodness instead they are held back by the sameness of both just as corporation tend to copy each other non profits all tend to push the same priorities clean tech shows the result hundreds of undifferentiated products all in the name of one over broad goal doing something different is uh, what's truly good for society and it's also that what allows a business to profit by monopolizing a new market the best projects are likely to be overlooked not trumpeted by a crowd the best problems to work on are often the ones nobody else even tries to solve next tesla 747 tesla is one of the few clean tech companies started last decade to be thriving today the they rode the social buzz of clean tech better than anyone but they got the seven questions right so their success is uh, instructive technology tesla technology is so good that other car companies rely on it daimler uses tesla battery packs mercedes benz uses a tesla powertrain Tes- Toyota uses a Tesla motor. General Motors has even created a task force to track Tesla's next moves. But Tesla's greatest technological achievement isn't any single part or component, but rather its ability to integrate many components into one superior product. The Tesla Model S sedan, elegantly designed from end to end, is more than the sum of its parts. Consumer Reports rated it higher than any other car ever reviewed, and both Motor Trend and Automobile Magazine named it their third 2013 Car of the Year. timing in 2009 it was easy to think that the government would continue to support clean tech green jobs were a political priority federal funds were already earmarked and congress even seemed likely to pass cap and trade legislation but where others saw generous subsidies 
that could flow indefinitely tesla ceo elon musk rightly saw a one time only opportunity in january 2010 about a year and a half before solyendra imploded under the obama administration and politicized the subsidy question tesla acquired a 465 million dollar loan from the us department of energy a half billion dollar subsidy was unthinkable in the mid 2000s uh it's unthinkable today there was only one moment where that was possible and tesla played it perfectly monopoly tesla started with a tiny sub market that it could dominate the market for high end electric sports cars since the first roadster rolled off the production line in 2008 tesla sold only about 3000 of them but at 19000 dollar price a piece that's not trivial starting small al- allowed Tesla to undertake the necessary R&D to build the slightly less expensive Model S and now Tesla owns the luxury electric sedan market too. They sold more than 20,000 sedans in 2013 and now Tesla is in the prime position to expand to broader, broader markets in the future. Team Tesla CEO is the consummate engineer and salesman it's so it's not surprising that he is assembled a team that's very good at both. Elon describes his staff this way if you are at Tesla you are choosing to be the equivalent of special forces that there is the regular army and that's fine but if you are working at Tesla you are choosing to step up your game. Distribution most companies underestimate distribution but Tesla took it so seriously that it decided to own the entire distribution chain. Other car companies are beholden to independent dealership Ford and Hyundai make cars but they rely on other people to sell them. Tesla sells and services its vehicle in its own store. The, the, the upfront cost of Tesla's approach are much big, higher than traditional dealership distribution but it affords control over the customer experience, strengthens Tesla's brand and saves the company money in the long run. Durability. Tesla has a head start and it's moving faster than anyone else and that combination means its lead is set to widen in the years ahead. A coveted brand is the clearest sign of Tesla's breakthrough. A car is one of the biggest purchasing decisions that people ever make and consumers trust in that category is hard to win. And unlike every other car company at Tesla, the founder is still in charge so it's not going to ease off any time any time soon. Secrets. Tesla knew the fashion uh, that fashion drove in trust in clean tech rich people especially wanted to appear green even if it meant driving a boxy Prius or clunky Honda inside. Those uh, cars only made drivers look cool by association with the famous eco-conscious movie stars who owned them as well. So Tesla decided to build cars that made drivers look cool. Period. Leonardo DiCaprio even ditched his Prius for an expensive and expensive looking Tesla Roadster. While generic uh, clean tech companies struggled to differentiate themselves, Tesla built a unique brand around the secret that clean tech was even more of a social phenomena than an environmental phenomena. Energy 2.0, 2.0. Tesla's success proves that there was nothing uh, inherently wrong with clean tech. The biggest idea behind it is right. The world really uh, will need new sources of energy. Energy is the master resource. It's how we feed ourselves, build shelter, and make everything we need to live comfortably. Most of the world dreams of living as comfortably as Americans do today, and globalization will cause increasingly severe energy challenges unless we build new technology. There simply aren't enough resources in the world to replicate old approaches or redistribute our way to prosperity. Clean tech gave people a way to be optimistic about the future of energy, but when indefinitely optimistic investors betting on the general idea of green energy funded clean tech. Companies that uh, lacked specific business plan, the result was a bubble. Plot the valuation of alternative energy firms in the 2000s alongside the Nasdaq's rise and fall a decade before, and you see the same shape. Rain uh, picture, Rainix black, Nasdaq uh, gray. Okay, in 1995 to 2004, then 2003 to 2012. So we can see 99. Okay. NASDAQ 1995 it 400 reached to high of uh, around 2000 in year 2000 and uh, in 2004 it was at around 2200 uh, and Renex uh, 2003 it was at around 400 reached to around 1800 in 2008 and reached to around uh, 400 500 in 2012 coming back the 1990s had one big idea, the internet is going to be big, but too many internet companies had exactly that same idea and no others. An entrepreneur can't benefit from macro scale insight unless his own plans begin at the micro scale. 
clean tech companies face the same problem no matter how much the world needs energy only a firm that offers a superior solution for a specific energy problem can make money no sector will ever be so important that merely participating in it will be enough to build a great company the tech bubble was far bigger than clean tech and the crash even more painful but the dream of the 90s turned out to be right skeptics who doubted that the internet would fundamentally change publishing or retail sales or everybody social life looked prescient in 2001 but then they seem comically foolish today could successful energy startups be founded after the clean tech crash just as web 2.0 startups successfully launched amid the debris of the dot coms the macro need for energy solution is still real but a valuable business must start by finding a niche and dominating a small market facebook started as a service for just one university campus before it spread to other schools and then the entire world finding small markets for energy solution will be tricky you could aim to replace diesels as a power source for remote islands or maybe build modular reactors for quick redeployment at military installations in hostile territories paradoxically the challenge for the entrepreneurs who will create energy 2.0 uh, is to think small chapter 13 completed